Welcome. Let's get this. Let's get the show on the road. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to yet another Countess Lita stream. We have slightly changed the plan for tonight's stream because I'm gonna give you a little. I'm gonna give you a little backstory, and then we're gonna have. I'm gonna have Ariat talk. I'm gonna have Ariat talk because he's gonna be the lecturer tonight. Remember that time I did a VTuber um, art review slash Booba art review, which was like three weeks ago. And it's been a thousand years in VTuber time because there was so much drama that the drama that occurred eclipsed the drama that I was covering and talking about in that stream because I prepared so hard for it. I haven't posted that VOD up yet because I was going to post the VOD on YouTube like a week after I did the lecture, but I was editing it a little bit to like include some asides and also to like remove the part where I'm just watching other YouTube videos. But then I started editing it and then a bunch of other shit happened in VTuber land and it made me really uh, demotivated to continue to work on editing the video. So I stopped editing the video because I keep having to like put in asides like, hey, by the way, I did this before X, Y drama happens. And now that there's so much more drama in YouTuber space, I feel like I need to acknowledge all of the drama. And then when I say drama, I, I mean, that I, I, that sounds very dismissive, but I mean, I need to acknowledge all the things that have happened, which Aria is going to go into much more detail about because <sighs> over the weekend, we noticed there's this guy who's like a lawyer and who's talking about all this stuff. And I'm sure he'll go into it too. But he was like doing like really, really long streams. This is not going to be like a really, really long, like six hour lecture or anything. Um, but I thought that we were in a unique position to discuss the situation because of being genuine VTuber enthusiasts who also have advanced degrees. <laughs> of us both being professors uh, of some stripe. Uh, so I'm going to poke Ariat to unmute here and he'll introduce himself and what he's talking about. So here's tonight's agenda. First 45 minutes to an hour, however long it takes. We're going to be talking with Professor Wizard PhD Dr. Ratio about this stuff he's going to talk about. We're going to have a little lecture. This is just chatting. And then after that, I have four games. We're going to play them all for like at least 30 minutes longer if they're fun. It might be short. I think one of them is really short, um, but I, it's very promising uh, because the actual file is literally just new unity project.exe. I have a really good feeling about that. <laughs> I have a good feeling about that. And then three of them are on Steam. One of which is not out yet. I got a preview um, preview copy of a new game. And I was like, wait a second, you can't even buy this yet. Am I super cool? I guess I am. Uh, but it, they, they're all supposed to be weird. They were all, they're all weird games. And as we know, we like the weird games. We don't know what's gonna happen with the weird games. They usually tend to be at least one banger. I thought you were super cool, thank you. So today we're gonna hear from Ariat. Um, I make sure you're on the stream. And also, you probably don't want BGM, right? Let's turn the BGM down. We're going to turn uh, the Countess BGM all the way down. And I don't know if we want, I don't know if we want the, the chatting BGM. I'll put it on like really quiet. I don't know. Maybe we'll turn it all the way down. We'll we'll talk to Ariad about his preferences for BGM. All right, let's get let's get Ariad in here. You you may unmute now. Um. Okay. All right. Hi. Welcome. I'm gonna put your slides on screen here. What do we got? What do we Thank got? Thank you. Boom. Ha! Ah, Ariat prepared some professional-looking slides for tonight's lecture. So, Professor, Doctor, Professor, I'm gonna drive your slides, um, and Thank you, you tell me. All right, a brief flash of Pomu as I switch to the slide driver here. 
Um, you tell me when to advance the slides. Very well. I will say next slide, please. All right. And when you're ready, you're going to say next slide, please. But are we ready to do that now? Uh, not yet. I'll do a basic intro first. All right. Let's go. So uh, welcome to the lecture. I'll be Yay! doing a brief crisis calm discussion. I am Dr. Ariat, not Dr. Veritas Ratio, but <laughs> I didn't have a good picture of myself ready. So we're going to use Dr. Ratio as my stand in for right now. Next slide, please. All right. So my background, I have a PhD in mass media. The degree has changed its name several times since then, but it was given to me uh, some time ago now. So I've been a working professor now for, uh, golly, a good long time. Let's not do the math on that, okay? Let's, let's put that aside. Let, yeah, let's just not talk about it. But why? Uh, I'm not quite I'm not quite 420, but I am uh, getting up there. Mm. Uh, but, but my background before I got a PhD was in public relations. And my master's thesis was about uh, credibility of sources on the web all the way back in 2003. Things have changed since then to some degree, but not very much. <laughs> so You were really ahead of your time. My current focus. Yeah, I was. I was doing YouTube research uh, in 2007. And suffice to say, it's been a lot different now than it was uh, back in 2007. Yeah. But I've been in the field for quite some time. Uh, my primary research focus outside of just practitioner work, like with public relations and marketing, is automated behaviors, otherwise known as habits, and new media technology more generally. But my fundamental background has always been in PR and marketing. I do that for the countess when I'm not doing her laundry or getting groceries. <laughs> Next slide, please. Oh, uh, do you want so, BGM? Because it just cut off. This is a good time. I this is a care. good time to drop the BGM. Okay. Unimportant. So what are we talking about today? Uh, we're discussing uh, the firing of the person now known as Doki Bert, uh, formerly Selen Tatsuki, uh, from Nisanji EN, uh, operated by, of course, by any color, any color holding company, as well as a variety of third parties who have used this opportunity to get <laughs> clout, to mine views, uh, to make very long videos and collect a great deal of Super Chat revenue uh, <laughs> off of the disaster. Us too. Let's let's get in there. <laughs> no, with a, I, I I was like, hey, I'm gonna chase cloud. But also, I, I think we should we should neglect we shouldn't neglect the the reason that I asked you to do a stream about this with me is because you're in a very unique position. Because not only do you have a PhD with this with a study concentration in mass media and public relations, but also. So Len Tatsuki was your Kamiyoshi. <laughs> so you are deeply, deeply informed about this situation, both from the layperson side and from the deep, dark weeaboo side. This is true. Yeah. This is true. Both of these now, things are I will true. not be going into the details of the legality of the situation. I'm talking mostly about the comms, mm -hmm. how this was handled publicly. Mm -hmm. uh, the law is mm -hmm. handled by people who are better informed in the law than me. Mm -hmm. So I'll be sure I put up, for, up front that I am not a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And for those this, of this is, our audience that don't know the background, do you go into that or you want to go into it now? About, uh, wh about what happened? Get, do it quick. I'll get uh, slide two. The following slide handles it. Okay, great. So next slide, please. Okie dokie. So Doki, before she was Doki, she was Selen Tetsuki. Before that, she was Doki again. But while she was Selen... Uh, for various reasons, she wanted out of her contract. Any color did not want to let her out of her contract peaceably, and there was a dispute about this. And so the dispute became very public and very unpleasant. It was a lot of Twitter posts and YouTube videos. And in general, when you have a dispute with an employee, it's not good to do it in public, but any color seemed to insist this was the way to go forward. Next slide, please. Your meme there is your meme there is a little bit tiny on the screen, so I'm gonna read it out loud. Um, Please. It says, "Refuse to let the streamer Selen go on neutral terms. Claim there is no bully." Did you get this from uh, 4chan or what is this meme? <laughs> Where did this meme come from? A dank source. Dank source. Okay. Claim there is no bully. Well, she got bullied so hard she attempted on her life twice. Oh my god, this is very. Uh, this is written in very broken English, which is very interesting. Fire her while mm -hmm. she's still recovering in hospital, which is what happened. Um, that's the background on the situation, right? And tell people to buy your new merchandise. 
That's what it says on the slide. And then merchandise mm -hmm. shops start to tell you they don't work with you anymore. And then they're making they're wearing the clown, the clown. <laughs> yes. Um, the background for people who don't follow is basically that, right? I think that kind of sums it up. All right, move on to the next yeah, slide. It, it is a summary of the situation. I will not go into the full details of the nasty background, uh, but that is the top level summary. Now, why did Doki want to leave? After all, she was famous. She had this company supporting her. Uh, she had all this stuff going for her that we saw, but her conditions were quite poor, and she was upset about her compensation as well as payment of artists who came out of her own pocket. Uh, most of her profits were being eaten up by projects, and she got very little support from the company, which was she was not satisfied with, so she wanted to leave. However, she was not being permitted to leave in a way that was graceful, and this caused a whole lot of problems, which now are being monetized by all kinds of people who are not Nidhi Sanji. <laughs> okay. comment, comment from chat, the memes make these slides perfect. The memes are truly wonderful. Thank you for the memes. Well, I have to make slides that, of course, the rule for a slide, you should have at least one funny picture per slide. Yeah. The next slide is you advance to the actual crisis comm section. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I will not do a full crisis comm definition. I was going to talk about the main points of what crisis comms are all about. Mm -hmm. An important assumption in crisis communication is that while you may present information in a way you wish to be interpreted in one way, the audience decides what it means. You do not have control over how people understand what you say. You can influence that, but you don't really control how people think. This is an important idea because PR cannot mind control people. It can only lead to a degree of influence. How you say something and how is important to how your message is interpreted by others. And critically, different groups, like the EN audience versus the JP audience, communicate using different styles, assumptions, and social norms. What is okay in JP is not always okay in EN. If someone said that sentence before I chose my major, my life would be very different. <laughs> yeah. Next well, slide. we aim to please. Next slide. Next slide, please. All right. Yes. You're very eager. I know my slides are very good. They are very good. All right. So how do you do crisis comms? Very simply, you can do an entire semester course about this and not even scratch the surface. But I have broken it down to the three points. You want to figure out what the problem is, and that might not be the problem you think it is. You might think one thing's a problem and try to address that, but your audience thinks a different thing is the problem. And that difference in opinion can make your strategy fall apart if you don't pivot and adapt to situations. So constant surveillance and assessment is an important part of the crisis comm process. Now, when you remediate a problem, you should take responsibility, but you should do so in a way which is authentic and sincere. You need to make a genuine effort to admit what things are your fault and take corrective action that is appropriate to the people you're trying to apologize or remediate to. You can't just say you're sorry and be kind of sniffly and snotty about it like some people have done in the past. You need to actually be sincere about your apology and then put action steps into place to fix it if you want to repair the damage caused by the incident, whatever that might be. And if you can't solve the problem, if there's simply an irre irreconcilable difference of opinion between two parties or more, you should explain what your problem is and why you can't address it. You should not try to cast blame. You say what your position is, say it clearly, and then move on. That is the ideal case. This did not happen here. <laughs> Next slide, please. All right. Let's, let's talk about that. Oh, I like the transition. <laughs> drama. Oh, yeah, drama. This was a mess. This, this is, s several people should be fired for how this was handled because it, it was just so incompetent. Like a level of incompetence that shocks me as a PR professional, and I've seen some really bad incidents. I have seen messes. I have seen disasters. And this one is probably top five now in my casebook. <laughs> a severe mess. Thank you. Lemon just number seven. <laughs> okay. Thank you for thank you for logging in. Thank you for logging you in. You are welcome. Okay. So 
First thing, they announced she was fired, and that's fine, but it didn't need to be as long as it was. It was a very long note making all kinds of claims about why she was severed from the company, and not all those details were found to be factually accurate. And when you make factually inaccurate claims in public, you encounter problems. You can look at the original tweet. It is still up. And it says a lot of things that are disputed very promptly inside the same thread and then disputed community notes on X. When you get in that kind of situation, you have already shit the bed. It has gone very badly. I wonder and if then... We, I'm wondering if we can bring up the... Oh, here we go. I have found the tweet from Nichi Sanji, and if you would permit me to bring that up for those that are not familiar with the background about the situation. Please. That's cool. okay, so. Please do. So this is the official the official tweet. Um, they, they they fired her, um, and this is what they posted. Uh, it's a lot. It's long. Um, it goes it's into psychotic. A, a lot of detail. It, it's an insane letter. It is the and work of a madman. Community noted as well. So there's a lot of details listed here. Um, it, it, it talks in, in great detail about the situation from the corporate side of things, including um, all times in JST. Amidst the aforementioned and circumstances, it posted a music video without prior approval as required by the activity rules. The materials for the music video were shared with the first time on management. Yeah, if I'm ever fired, I hope it's by a letter of five plus pages. This is a three page letter. So that's the original post. That you're yeah, referring it to. Is, you should never do this. You should never, ever do this. You should not litigate things in public in this manner. You should never, ever do it. The person responsible for this should be fired for gross negligence. It is transcendently bad. Do not do this. So then, after making a giant mess, of course, Doki Bird releases a counterstatement, which then gets a huge amount of attention. Right. And in so doing... You started a public argument about a labor dispute on X. Consider that for a moment. What implications that have to have a public labor dispute on social media between a former employee and a large corporation with a billion dollar market cap? Let's bring up Doki's statement. Oh, yeah. I just had that on the screen. Um, her statement is, it only says this for right now. Now there's, she'll say more later, but. Yeah, we, we get to that part. You, you think, okay, okay, we've hit the, the, the peak. It will not get worse from this. Surely someone would say, please stop. Surely we'd hear that at some point. Uh, no. Yeah. Next slide, please. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sorry, I got to click on the slide thingy. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So then. Doki goes about her business, just stops talking about the former company, tries to move on her life, is not antagonizing people on the internet to go after the company for being fired. She wants to move on for life and go back to doing her own stream. And so on one stream she was doing pretty early on, this was a Neopet stream, it was going to be very lighthearted and fun, and all the dragons were very happy to watch Neopets happen in a peaceable manner. We were all calm. And then, counter-programming her exact stream, Annie Color generated a presentation on YouTube to further debunk Doki's claims while she was streaming. It was an extremely awkward counter-stream. It was assembled with very low technical quality. Several people were involved as presenters who seemed to not want to be presenting this information. And it created giant audience backlash. It was a disaster. It was the kind of follow-up you'd have for a different cultural context and a different audience. The EN audience was furious. Doki had to stop her stream, because her lawyer had probably called her, to try to address the situation that was happening on YouTube in public in front of God and everyone about this legal matter that several documents had already been filed and signed previously before this kept continuing out in the public eye. Rarely have I seen such a colossal mess unfold in public from a company that is this large 
and has this much money. It was a moment in time I will take with me for the rest of my career. This could Amazing. Be an actual university lecture. It um, will be. Next I'm, slide, please. Sorry for the occasional flashes of my uh, po pomufied desktop. I when I change windows, sometimes you get a little flash of that, but I think it adds to the ambiance. So, <laughs> all right. Next slide. Well, we, we are always pomo. We're always uh, still that pomo. will always be true. We're still pomo. Yes. Yeah. It was. It was extremely poor. So, let's find the inflection point when the video was released. So the stream happened on February thirteenth. And we were starting to see a plateau in subgrowth. She was going to probably cap out around 500k and so probably hang in there for a while. These subscribers are and Doki, build Doki, back Bird, up. Doki Bird subscribers, right? Not Niji yes. Sanji subscribers. Okay. Got is it. It, these are, I did not, that was too many charts. I just made one. All right. Where's the chart? So this is, thank you. Uh, these are Doki subs. Mm -hmm. I pulled this from Social Blade, I believe. And we see that for a while it was starting to level out. She had gotten back about a little over half of original subscribers. And then this other video from Niji Sanji came out, and then everyone got really upset, and then everyone started to fly behind Doki's banner, and their subgrowth ex accelerated tremendously, and now she's crested over 600k really in less than a week. So she gained a significant number of subscribers off of this thing, which Niji Sanji did, but how could this have happened? Next slide, please. Do you know who Barbara Streisand is? Great, great slide. Great I slide. do. Great slide. I, a, a talented actress, a director, a very intelligent person, but she made a very critical mistake almost 20 years ago to the day. And that mistake she made was getting upset at a photographer who had photographed her mansion uh, off the coast of Malibu. Uh, he would, he was, the photographer used a drone or something or got up there and used a telephoto lens and photographed her mansion, and she didn't like that, so she sued him. And the lawsuit brought about more publicity for the picture than could have possibly been imagined. All that pub was free. And so we think about major errors like this as being part of the Streisand effect. So, next slide, please. If I were to advise you as a company of any kind, but any color in particular, I would do it like this. I would have four major points. I think we can learn from this gruesome incident. If you got to sever someone, and you have to post it about it publicly, as few details as possible is probably ideal. If there's a legal reason to post more information, by all means do so. But you only post what you are legally compelled to do and nothing further. You should not make an argument. You should just let things go and say what it is you have to say and then move on. Because while I know people in management get hurt feelings and they have emotional lives and they have struggles and they are upset at losing giant contracts and looking bad, the health of your brand is more important than your feelings. Your money is more important than your feelings. So, if you get your talent signed in the NDA to protect yourself, do not remove your own protection and violate the NDA because then it can make it way worse. And you don't want that. You do not want any more smoke or problems. If the lawyers handled your problems, let the lawyers handle your problems and then move on. Because even though you might have a legal ability and right to complain and to say things about a person's previous performance, it is unwise to appear like you're retaliating, even if you are legally able to do so, because people will still see that as being bullying and being unfair. But I know the C-suite doesn't read, so next slide, please. <laughs> when you argue with the audience, the audience wins. Shut up. Stop <laughs> talking. Quit it. Please don't do this. If I am a stockholder, I am getting ready to jump out a window out of the behavior of the situation I have seen over the last two weeks. You don't have to say things, so you shouldn't say things. Say only what you have to say, and then stop talking. 
I mean, I've been here for 10 seconds already. Not the speaker. The speaker is Ariat. Ariat's our friend. But <laughs> we can hate whoever said the stupid shit that he's talking about. <laughs> well, we don't know who said it. That's, that's the part we don't understand. We don't know who said all this stuff. Because that person hasn't been named. We can mm -hmm. guess. Mm -hmm. Whatever their corporate rep it was that posted the stuff on Twitter, this person should not be working at this company or any other company ever again. Because this is a failure of judgment. Should we watch the CEO video? If you insist, I am, I don't want to listen to it, though. No, you don't? You don't want to watch the CEO video? You You're can play it. Man, I mean, gonna... language. <laughs> yeah. I would... I would love to know. I would love to get your feedback. You haven't watched it. Have you watched it? I have not given them any views. Oh, okay. I watched a summary of we're it. Gonna get your, we're going to get your live feedback. I want to know. Okay. 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 But look, last slide. This slide's very important. <laughs> okay. The last slide, of course, is about questions. So, Do all we? in all, Doki did nothing wrong. Doki, Doki Thank Bird you. did nothing wrong. Thank you. Do do, technically, it's someone else giving it a view, and you're just Ludo v code into the chair. That's right. I'm giving the view. I'm I'm clicking on it. Yeah, yeah. Conversation. If you came in late, we're talking about the um, Niji Sanji drama, and the reason I keep saying drama, and it feels so dismissive because uh, it's actually kind of a big deal. We're talking about the situation with Doki Bird slash Selend. And the reason I decided to do this is because there's been a lot of conversation about it on the internet for the last two weeks. It hasn't slowed down at all. And I felt we were in a unique position because not only is Ariat here a communications mass media expert, but he's also a major Doki Bird fan. Like for real, real. Like <laughs> most of the people you hear that are like, I have a layperson's opinion on this or I have an educated opinion on this aren't VTuber enthusiasts. And most of the VTuber enthusiasts maybe don't have PhDs. So we're just like, we're weirdos. We have this like unique, hey, we're professors. Let's talk about VTubers again. Um, so here's a question. Is this one of those type things where they have massively restrictive contracts and are usually culturally pressured into staying quiet? Probably, I would say. I would say probably. I don't have the language in front of me, but I would say overall, based on previous incidents, because there have been several other incidents like this in the past, this one blew up. But based on what I've seen in previous incidents, yes, it's mostly about cultural pressure. But in this case, it didn't work. Um, and Ariat, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's pretty common for them to post a notice when they let somebody go. Um, but Niji Sanji has been inconsistent in how much detail they give. Yeah, you compare the earlier postings of releases to this giant mess, and it's night and day. They gave a lot of details when they let Zion Lanza go as well. And then they didn't give but a not, lot of details when they gave other when they let other talents go. Not three pages. Not three pages. No, they really laid in this time. It was a bigger yeah. than usual post. It was it was psychotic. You should never post that much detail about a separation, not in public. So it, it had specific dates and times. Um, so if I'm a corporation and I'm not, but if I am and I'm going to sever a contract with somebody, probably shouldn't write a three page burn notice. Yeah, you should not do it on in general. You should not do it on X. You shouldn't make a YouTube video about it. You should just not do that. Should not make a YouTube video about it. Let's watch the YouTube video, Ariad. Right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna put up, put on the YouTube video. Hang on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on full screen so we can see it in its glory. So I had to change my screen here. All right. Let's gaze upon this video. Let's by, gaze. Uh, let's, the gaze CEO. Up, let's gaze upon this video. This is the CEO. This is the CEO. Consider becoming a corporation. It's the best way to protect your personhood in America. Oh, that, that's not a bad corporation. Let's see if we have audio. We do. Now look at this incredibly stiff presentation. Okay. Just marvel at how bad this is. Oh, I'm Rick Tazumi, CEO of Enikara Inc. I'm making this video to speak directly to you. The fans of Nisanji EN and everyone who supports the Buchiba industry. First of all, I deeply apologize for causing concern to many people.
please allow me this time to address your concerns. First, let me apologize for a misunderstanding caused by the notice published on our investor relations page on February 7th. We forgot to mention this, but there was a second notice that they posted. And all it said was, to the investors, the impact will be negligible. It was not. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was not. Do we know? Do we have? Do we know what the impact? Do we have that 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 number? Wait, let me get that. I think I posted that somewhere else. Yeah, it's something like fifteen percent drop in like one day. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't great. Like when I say it's catastrophic, I'm not underselling. This was a disaster from top to bottom. Before they did this, before Slim was separated, they had done a stock buyback to try and anticipate the stock damage from letting her go because she's one of her largest uh, female EN talents. Yeah, I mean, they were that concerned about it, and it didn't work. Get that? Let me get the the drop. I got it. I don't like to. And it's accidentally flashed my desktop, but it looks it looks something like this. King, I'm available for consulting. So the post to the post to the investors was there won't be a problem, but there was a problem. After announcing the combination of the contract, we received questions from investors. Oh God. Regarding the impact that shark is being anxiety. You're trying to see it. <laughs> that shark is bad. Yeah. The notice was published to respond to investors. In the notice, we unfortunately used the expression negligible to describe performance impact. Our wording lacked consideration for the situation and caused Nissan EN funds and everyone who supports the Bujiba industry to feel that Enigro Inc. undervalued the impact of Seren's contract termination or Seren herself. I deeply regret this outcome and will be rethinking how our communication in English is done. So yeah, the, instead of doing engineer disasters, we could all do PR disasters. What if we started a podcast, the PR disasters podcast, and you told me about amazing PR disasters and I asked stupid questions. <laughs> it's got legs. I mean, it could, it could be fun. Without a doubt, Seren was- I'll, I'll look into it. I will, I will consider building up a, a limited series. As a company, it is truly unfortunate that our relationship ended the way it did. We regret that the notice we published on February 7th was worded this way. We made it sound like our company does not value the hard work of our drivers. I deeply apologize. Okay, so what do you, how do you feel about this? Do you, do you think that's the primary issue with that particular notice? Well, that's, this goes back to my earlier slides. Mm -hmm. The problem you think you have it's not the problem your audience might think you have. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I imagine that in the perspective of the company, that was a problem. They interpreted that as being the problem. But in truth, the audience thought a different thing was more important to discuss, and that thing is still not being addressed. Next. I'll also, yeah, it's not sincere. It doesn't come across as sincere. His body language is very stiff. He was not coached well. I really up. think the people who advised him should be released. Yeah. Yeah. It's very reading off a teleprompter. Although, bold of them to do this only in English. Well, that's, that's the audience they are addressing. They understood right. the audience. Right. They didn't change the message. And that part's where a lot of people have problems be providing a safe environment where the rivals can maintain good mental health. We take full responsibility for this situation, where not only any girl ink, but also our rivals are receiving hurtful messages. I deeply apologize to our rivals and to everyone who supports them. Company actions have led to the distress of our rivals and we are taking this situation very seriously. 
Please understand that some rivals may choose to temporarily step back from social media. The management team continues to communicate with rivals to provide any and all support in every way. Yeah, you go to grounds that got so bad. We will be mm -hmm. implementing several new internal systems to ensure that the rivals. I wonder can why it got so bad for them personally. This is one of the history's mysteries. Ooh, also, yeah, by yeah. establishing things such as better reporting systems, we aim to create an environment where we can better identify and resolve issues more quickly. Now, for those of all that don't have the background as well, the reason some talents took more blame than others is because they were the ones, they actually asked the streamers to deliver the first PR message. Right? So people that didn't yes. know that. So they, they actually did it. they were looped right. in. Right. They yeah. were looped in. So also... We, I can assure you, King, they do not have a good exit clause, and many folks are now deeply marooned in this problem. Oh, yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. They did use the streamers as the first people to deliver the first message. Uh, was several of the streamers. Yeah. Top to bottom, this is Next, one of the worst disasters I've ever seen a media company commit that unforced. Has been raised by fans who have been supporting the Butchiba community regarding whether any girl Inc. has been supporting Nissan EN enough. Regarding YouTube content, we did not have official programs available until fall last year. I literally don't know what he means by that. Other than content for the 3D event in July. I don't think he does either. The canceled okay. Nissan EN AR Live colors in February last year. There has been a lack of 3D live content. However, in no, it's meantime, not sabotage. Here is why we have spent the no sabotage could be as effective as this. <laughs> if you were trying to do this right? on purpose, you couldn't do this much damage. Putting on working on strengthening the EN stuff so we can better provide content for Nissanji EN. Since last year, we have also started multiple new projects that are still in progress. In addition to supporting rivals on activities, better, we better hope provide will... content. Yeah. Better I... provide content. Yeah. Help improve our Nissan oh. EN content offerings. Yeah. Wait, what, of is that, was that our is problem? Was that the problem we thought we, they had? That was scheduled to be held. Well, they didn't, the they didn't jiggle the keys However, hard enough, I guess. Oh. And this caused a problem. After recent events, this event is being delayed. Professionally, so I don't think that was the problem. direct our mm -hmm. full attention so to reviewing and ensuring the quality of our library's well being. As a company, we intend to do everything in our ability to support Nissan EN and meet the fans' expectations. Finally, I apologize for not just recent events, but also pre-existing areas that needed our attention. It really our just doesn't come across are irreplaceable. well. irreplaceable. No. Each and every one of them. Beyond being business it's approaching partners, the wrong problem they are the most important and doing it as forcefully as possible, protect as a company. making the existing problem to worse. To everyone who has and continues to support the rivals, I am very sorry that situations were allowed to arise where our dedication to their well-being was not clear. I feel that this should never be the case. Once more, Personally, and on behalf of our company, I apologize to you all for causing concern. As any Inc., now we start we getting an apology that would almost work to ensure mm -hmm. that we create mm -hmm. and maintain an environment embarrassment. Yeah. where the drivers can succeed yeah. in their creative. Endeavors. If he had stuck the landing a little better, this could have been salvaged somewhat. I am but not going to play. Almost got there. I'm not going to play the one from the livers because it's first of all, it's a black screen. So it's terrible. Yeah, it looks bad. Yeah, it's 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 pretty bad. But I don't feel like I want to play it again. But I knew no, you hadn't seen bad. this yet, and I wanted to get your opinion on this because that would actually cause the most. Yeah, that one's 
that one's bad. That one's hard to watch um, or listen to, I guess, in the case of B because it's black screen. Um, it's like a hostage situation. Yeah, like they had taken them hostage. It, it really comes across as a, a, a really bad energy. Also a disaster. If they had stopped there and not done this, it probably would have faded away somewhat. But they kept compounding it. And, and it is interesting because of in light of what you said, where you said the problem that you have is not necessarily a problem the audience thinks you have. I mean, here he's talking about, we want to create more content for you, which nobody said there wasn't enough content. That was literally not, that was not a thing anybody said, I don't think, at any point in no. time. No. There's, if anything, there's too much. It's hard to keep up. But the the problem was more with the, process to approve that content for the people who were streaming. So, yeah. I don't know why he was apologizing. That's the underlying complaint of the back end. Yeah. Like the, the initial problems that led Doki to want to quit mm -hmm. was that her pipeline was being congested too much and she wanted to do more work. Mm -hmm. A problem you normally would not have an issue with as an employer. Right. If an employee wants to do more work is willing to pay that out of pocket to keep doing work. That to me seems like an opportunity, but in this case, they somehow managed to make this person, this workaholic, into mm -hmm. a problem mm -hmm. they had to sever. Right. She worked too hard, too too much work, worked too hard, too much high power, and they, it turned into an issue, basically. Um, because a lot of these VTuber companies, they have a really long pipeline to get your, your ideas for streams and stuff. You have to wait to get them approved. Yeah. So she was making them look bad. Yeah, basically. Um, now I will say in the defense of the company, cause I am not, I don't want to become across as being too down on the idea of the company. Mm -hmm. Some of this comes down to Japanese copyright law being mm -hmm. very, very strict. Mm -hmm. So there is an argument there. The company's a process to get things approved so they are not held liable in a Japanese court. That part makes sense. However, when you build at scale and don't plan a process to handle that scale, you will encounter problems, as we see in many tech companies today. And I think they grew very rapidly as far as their outreach to the West, so maybe that was also just like a culture clash there. It's definitely a culture issue. Lawyers don't scale well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and that was also the fact having to deal with that anything that remotely deviates from the script is full blown panic. Yeah, yeah, that it did seem like that was what happened here for sure. Well, so, thank norms, you. standards, practices, mm -hmm. these things are important. Sure. Thank you for being on the stream with me today to discuss this. Oh, you're quite welcome. I can provide more lectures as uh, the audience requires. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, when they are saying we should start a podcast, the PR Disasters podcast. I don't think anybody's got this niche. We might be able to knock this one out. This would be a really cool idea. You should think about it. I'll do some research. I'll do some research. <laughs> think, of, think of like eight more PR disasters. We could do a, a mini series. I could ask dumb questions and you could be like, yeah, yeah this is what happens. Here's the bad. Here's the bad thing. Uh, this is an absolute delight. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Just invite. Yeah, there we go. We'll interview some people. Well, if I'm reaching corporate villains, oh. I reached the correct audience. <laughs> As a corporate villain. Yeah. Well, this is a uh, this is university level communications class. You get two university level professors on today. But Garriott's the expert in this stuff. Um, I'm the expert in art stuff. Sometimes code. Awesome. I have no background music, so you know me. I like to talk to fill the void. Thank you. Well, do you, wanna, the, you, do you want to stick up. around for games, or do you want to bail? Uh, I think I will dip. I, I, I can't really watch stream. So I'm effectively, on delay. Effectively moderating the yeah. stream. Uh, that is true. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're going to have an ad break up here in a second. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and let this go to ads, because we get good timing on that. And then I'm going to start up. Tonight's first of four games. Oh my God, we got so much going on tonight. Thank you, Ariat, for joining us. Um, I'm going to clip this thought up into individual pieces to post later. Yep. So you are welcome. Have a and great then stream. Eventually, at some point, I'm going to post the boob review, but that 
stream has to be cut into pieces and point to this one at this point because of all the shit that went down. <sighs> all right, let's go back to my chatting screen. Oop. I'm going to jump off Discord. And then we're going to go to a quick commercial break for those of you who are watching us in the commercial land. And uh, right from the hall there. Wonderful. I'm excited for the VODs. Let me be able to pause on the slides. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, and Twitch does save my VODs for a number of days as well. And now you can unmute. Yeah, um, Twitch does save my VODs for a number of days as well. So I'm going to do a quick commercial break and then I'm going to put on the game. So let's get that little do do do. 